Last week, my husband posted a video on how to field dress pheasant and quail. And he received a whole bunch of comments related to, well then how do you properly cook and prepare um, these game birds? And so today we're gonna make for you our favorite way to cook wild game birds, which is wild game bird spatzel soup. And in this case, we're gonna be using pheasant, chucker partridge, morning dove, and quail. And the reason why this soup is so lovely is because you actually include the whole bird. Because the bones and the neck and all of that add a really rich flavor to the broth. And not only that, but you also utilize the whole bird, which is great. So we're going to start with creating our broth, which we use um, a number of different aromatics and then throw our meat in there and then we cook and let it simmer for about an hour or longer if you have the time. So we've got onions and garlic and we also have celery. We have some fresh herbs, some thyme and some rosemary, as well as apple, which we like to really add some sweetness to the broth. And then one of our other kind of speeded up methods is using this better than bouillon um, chicken base because it really adds a lot of richness and especially if you don't have as much time to develop your broth and your flavor of your broth. So to start off I'm gonna just chunk up our aromatics and throw them in and then we'll throw our birds in and we'll get them going. So we first we start with our celery and we just put them in big chunks. I don't know if you can see here from the the angle, but we were using a, a, a stock pot that has a strainer. It's, it's handy for pasta, but it's also great for this because you can just lift everything out and you have this beautiful broth left and you can then shred all of your meat and it's really easy. So we'll throw in our celery. Just quarter up the onion. You want everything actually to be pretty big because then it makes it a lot easier to strain out in the end. So we just throw some of our onion in. And then actually it's now time to really put these birds in. So we'll just throw them in the pot. And I make this so much, I really don't measure. I just kind of throw everything in. But we just throw our birds in there. I'll just move this out of the way. And then I do like to split my garlic open just to enhance the flavor a little bit. Throw those in, and then we've got our apple, and I just quickly core it. And actually, the cute thing about using apple, this was, this is one of my son's favorite meals, and he was helping me make the broth one day, and he was being creative and said, Mommy, we should add apple. And so we did, and it turned out really great. So now it's like our little secret, and we put it in. And then we add our rest of our onion and then we throw in our herbs and then now I'm going to fill up the stock pot with water um, you don't want to overfill because you will boil over but fill it with water add some of that bouillon base a good amount of salt and pepper and get it going so we're going to fill up our pot with water So next, we'll go ahead and add our bouillon base. And like I said, I don't really measure, I just kind of throw it in. And the longer you have, the less you really need of this because the, the broth itself just enriches. Just add a couple spoonfuls of that. You wanna bring it to a good boil and then reduce it to a simmer. And I like to cover it part way so that all of the broth doesn't evaporate off. I like to add a good amount of pepper And all of these seasonings can be adjusted after your broth has really developed flavor. But I do kind of like to start out with a good base. And then you add some good amount of salt. Remember you added a whole bunch of water in there so it's going to need some salt. So then we get it going and get it bubbling on the stove and let it go for an hour or as much time as you have. Our spatzel soup has been simmering away on the stove here for over an hour and now it's time to strain out the solids and then we're going to shred up our meat and then we'll move forward with making our soup. So the first thing we'll do is we'll move this over to the sink because it can get a bit, a bit messy. So as you can see this pot comes in real handy so you don't have to handle the hot hot liquid but we're 
moving it around. And then I like to set it in a bowl because it still continues to drain. All right, so we're just gonna remove the meat out of the pot. And you can see it's very tender, it's fall off the bone. And in this case, with all these little game birds, there's gonna be a lot of bones. As you can see, we have a diversity of colors of meat here. We have the light meat from the pheasant and the dark meat from the doves. And if you don't have the game birds, you can certainly just use a whole chicken. It's really nice as well. The next thing we've done is we've chopped up about a pound of carrots. And you can see we have a few lingering carrots from our garden. So I'm just going to chop the rest of these up. I add them to the soup and get it boiling again after you've removed your, your aromatics and your meat. And then when you're dealing with meat that's really low in fat, it's really best to add it right back at the end because you don't want to dry it out. It's kind of strange to think that you could dry out this meat, but it's really best just add it right at the end and um, right when we're adding our homemade noodle. So we put the broth back on the heat and we're going to add these carrots back in so they can flavor the broth but also get nice and soft. Our parsley is still growing strong in the garden and it adds a really nice color, not especially a very strong flavor, but I also like to add it when I'm adding the meat at the end so that it maintains that beautiful green color. So I just put it in the bowl with the meat and we'll add it at the end. We're gonna move forward with making our spetzel noodle and you start with five eggs, flour, salt, and water. Very simple. Um, and you want to create a consistency that's kind of like thick pancake batter because you're actually going to be pushing this dough through our improvised spitzel maker, which is really just a um, grilling vegetable pan. And we found that the size of these holes is perfect for the noodles. So this is what we're going to use. We're just going to get our eggs all in here, mix them up. And we use, um, the only thing I do measure is I measure a teaspoon of salt because that would be a bummer if you had too much salt. Get them blended and then you, I add some water at this point. And you can see I'm not really measuring, I'm just getting the consistency. So at this point it's been, I don't know, half a cup or something of water. And then I start with first with a cup and it'll be kind of lumpy, but you just have to be, get this out of here. You have to be kind of patient. So kind of stir your first cup in. And you'll use somewhere between two and three cups of flour. I added a little bit more flour, a little more than two cups, and you can see here, kind of like thick pancake batter, um, but definitely nothing close to bread dough. So this is about the consistency you want. So you just set this aside until you're ready to make your noodle once your carrots are done. Our carrots have been bubbling away and now we're going to add the meat and the parsley. And again, this is because we're using such lean meat. You just want to add it right at the end. And we'll bring it back up to a boil. And at that point, we'll add our noodle. We're back up to a boil on our soup. And so this is when we're going to start making our noodle. And our dough has rested and you can see it's gonna, we're just gonna do it in batches. Do it in about thirds or so. And you just take a spatula and you push it through into the boiling broth. It hits the boiling water and they start to float and then they cook. And then with the egg, they actually kind of puff up a little bit and become a really nice, our boys call them dumplings, but they're kind of a cross between a dumpling and a noodle. As you can see, the noodles have really puffed up nicely and I like to do this in batches because it cooks the noodles nice and evenly. So we'll move forward with the rest of our noodles. Batch. Push it through. You want to have a good rolling boil on the broth so that the noodles get cooked pretty quickly and so they don't clump together. But as you can see, it's really easy. Our wild game bird spetzel soup is done and now it's time to dish up and eat it. And you can see we've got a lot of meat and noodles and 
good garden carrots. And this soup is perfect for when you don't feel well. It's kind of the best chicken noodle soup you've ever had. Or just to warm up on a cold night. So we hope that you can make this recipe at home and enjoy it yourselves. Okay, go. Start with the legs, go all the way around, cut that scale. You see that joint pops right open, and then you just uh, work down the tendons, do it on the other side. Easy, now we'll do the wings. Come up the secondary, rip back, you'll hear that nice crunch, and then uh, we'll just work that tendon off. Flip it around, primary, secondary. Careful not to cut yourself. Okay, now we're gonna cut off the head. Just twist it off like that. And now start skinning it. The skin is so thin it comes right out. It's a little tough there at the wings, so you wanna turn it inside out. And uh, pull that right out. There we go, get the back. Get it right down the leg. Cut off that tail. Pull off those wing feathers there. Sometimes they can be a little tricky and tough right there, but they do come off. And then we're gonna wanna um, get the guts out. So you go right at the base of that bone there. Give one little nick. Get your two fingers in there. Grab that heart and all the guts, gizzard, pull out. There, I got a little cleanup left, but that is one minute and 44 seconds.